We're now going to start looking at quantum mechanics. So if we quantize something, it just means that we can put it together in terms of discrete increments of something. We don't have a whole continuum. Instead, it's broken up into little bits and we can only add together integer numbers of these little bits. So a couple of examples that you're probably aware of is in the olden days before we had bank transfers and credit cards, people used to pay for things with money, coins and notes. In this case, the smallest increment of money that was possible to use was the one cent coin, which used to have a little wombat on it. So back then, when these coins were the main way of transferring money, money was quantized in terms of that one cent coin. Now you've also been learning about charge. Charge is also quantized. If we want to charge something up, we give it a certain number of electrons or, or we take those electrons away if we want it to become positive. So charge is always an integer multiple of the charge on an electron, which is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now in 1905, Einstein proposed a similar theory for light. He said that light was quantized. It came in little packets and you could give certain amounts of light to atoms and things in interactions. So the elementary particle of light became known as the photon. Now everything you've learned about light so far with the equation c equals f lambda, for example, relating the frequency of the wavelength, still holds. This is just another way of viewing light which holds concurrently. In the past, quantum mechanics hasn't been as important as it is now. With the advances we're making in engineering, we've got highly sensitive equipment and so often we're only transferring very small amounts of energy, so possibly even we, we can transfer single photons. So it's starting to be more and more important that we have a good understanding of quantum mechanics. Some of the ideas are a bit difficult to get your head around, but hopefully you'll come to a reasonable understanding of it during this topic. Okay, so light is quantized with certain amounts of energy. So a photon of energy carries a certain amount of energy given by HF where h is Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds, and f is the frequency of the light. So if we want to give energy to something, say to an atom, we can only give it as a photon, so in a, a certain specific amount of energy which comes from that photon. So as we'll see later, we need specific photons to make certain transitions within an atom happen. So when we give an electron a certain amount of energy, it can jump from one level in an atom to another level. If we try and give it a photon which isn't equal to one of the difference between two of the levels in the atom, nothing can happen. The photon just keeps going and is not absorbed. Okay, so the first thing we need to be able to do is calculate the amount of energy that a photon can have. All the rules that you've learned so far about the relationship between the energy, the power and the intensity still hold. So let's do a worked example now. Okay, so the question is, a sodium vapour lamp is placed at the centre of a large sphere that absorbs all the light reaching it. The rate at which the lamp emits energy is 100 watts. Assume that emission is entirely at a wavelength of 590 nanometers. At what rate are photons absorbed by the sphere? Okay, so in order to do this one, power is equal to energy over time, which is equal to 100 watts. So that's the rate at which the lamp is releasing energy. And we're told that the wavelength that it's releasing the energy at is 590 nanometers. 
So we can use this to calculate the energy of the individual photons. So we'll need to use our equation E is equal to HF. But in order to use this, we need to find F. So F is related to lambda through C is equal to F lambda, which tells us that F is equal to C over lambda. So this is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 over 590 times 10 to the minus 9 because it's nanometers. And solving this, we get 5.08 times 10 to the 14. And that's in hertz, or you can call it inverse seconds. OK, so now we have the frequency of the photons. So we can work out the energy carried by one photon using HF. So this is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. And then the frequency was 5.08 times 10 to the 14. So solving this one, we get 3.37 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And that's on one photon, so joules per photon. Now what we're trying to get is the rate at which photons are absorbed. So that's the number of photons over time. So what we can do here is we can say, well, that's the energy over the time times the number of photons over the energy. So energy over time, that's what we've got up here for our light. So that's why we put that expression in there. This is the power. And the photons divided by the energy, well, we've got the amount of energy per photon. So we've got the inverse of that. So um, we should probably put that as joules, and this is energy. OK, so what we've got here is 100 watts. And then we divide that by the energy on one photon, which is 3.37 times 10 to the minus 19. That's joules per photon. And this one here is joules per second. So the joules cancel out. And we end up with, solving it on the calculator, 2.97 times 10 to the 20 photons per second.